Okay, welcome to appliance time. Is this, I think I'm going to call this appliance time, even though I feel like these days TVs are less appliances and more consumer electronics. So I'm staying in a hotel, and I haven't been doing a lot of travel lately where I've stayed in a hotel, so I'm having a little bit of like a, almost a nostalgia moment with this hotel TV system. Some of you have probably seen before, it used to be that when you stayed in a larger hotel, this is not, by the way, this is not a, a paid endorsement for the Rubio. Uh, I can't personally speak to it, but I have seen some really incredible demonstrations in this 15 minute video loop. Uh, anyway, if you stay in a larger hotel, it's, it's long been common for them to have these hospitality TV systems. So you'd look behind the TV and there would be a set-top box, but like a specialized hospitality industry set-top box. And these were sold as integrated products to hotel chains, mostly so that they could add uh, on-demand video as a revenue stream. And I won't like get into the maybe the slightly complex uh, morality of on-demand video as a revenue stream for hotels, but it's been a thing for decades. What's kind of changed is that the TV manufacturers have gotten into this market. So this just looks like an LG TV. If I like spent enough time to get it off the wall and looked, I could get a model number, but this is not this is not a consumer LG TV. This is a hospitality LG TV. And that's happened just because LG, they make TVs, but they're also a vendor of hospitality TV systems now. So instead of having a TV and then a hospitality set-top box, this is just a hospitality TV. It has the, the like set-top box functions built into it. And I think this system might be all IP. I haven't looked behind the TV carefully enough to see if it has coaxial cable to it or just network. But a lot of these these days are all IP. One of the little hints you can often get on IPTV is seeing how long it takes to change channels. And, you know, to be fair, digital cable has this problem as well. So we may just be seeing the normal uh, kind of digital cable behavior here. But digital cable systems and then IP systems, they have a lot of latency in the actual like video decoding chain, which has the effect that switching channels takes a long time. If you remember having like cable TV or antenna service back in like the CRT days, you might remember that channel surfing used to be better. Uh, it's kind of the nature of digital TV technology today that channel surfing has gotten a lot worse. But that's not what I was going to talk about. What I was going to talk about is the hospitality functionality. So this is a, a hospitality model from LG. You can kind of tell that because it came with one of these remotes that I'll hold awkwardly in front of the camera that is antimicrobial and the, the battery door is screwed closed so that guests don't wander off with the batteries, which I take it was a, was a problem before hotels started having special remotes. I wanted to talk about this a little bit because, you know, people who are into like vintage PCs often talk about this phenomenon of shovelware where like consumers used to buy computers as packages with software to run on them, which meant that if you wanted to, you know, like advertise a computer, you had to have a whole bunch of software to bundle with it. And you'd also see these, like you'd go to like the, the store and there'd be like a CD they were selling that had 70 video games on it. And like, you know, there's a way they did that, right? All 70, look at, it is lifting six training bowling balls. What do you think a training bowling ball is and how does it relate weight-wise to a normal one? Anyway, this vacuum aside, so shovelware. There used to be a system of incentives that meant that like kind of in the late 90s, there was an incredible amount of PC software that was just utter garbage because the quality of the software didn't matter. All that mattered was being able to say for like marketing purposes that you had, you know, this number of applications. Well, shovelware is not like, uh, it's not a phenomenon that has left us. There's still a lot of shovelware in our modern world. And I think we see a surprising amount of shovelware in embedded applications. 
where there are, are products that have features that are so hilariously poorly implemented that I don't think anyone in like the process of building the feature actually contemplated someone using it. It's always been purely that there was like a requirement for the product that it did this thing. So we made this thing here, look at it, the button's there, and when you push it, something happens. Are you happy? These hospitality TV systems, they have a lot of that going on. So I'm going to uh, take us away from the Rubio vacuum, and I'm going to hit the menu button. The first thing, I've got to awkwardly hold the remote in front of the camera again for you to see this, but you got to know the latency from pushing a button on the remote to this menu responding. Of course, the camera can't focus on both. It's probably, a, it's definitely a full second. I think it might be up to like 1.5 seconds. Maybe I'll try looking at the video later to, to measure that accurately. But it's incredibly unresponsive. Most of the functionality in here is like not really that interesting to look at because, you know, someone just made this thing work, right? It's all like kind of straight down the middle. It's very boring. We've got on-demand programming. This interface sucks. Like there's this one second input lag. This like carousel layout thing doesn't really make sense, but I'm sure we've all used like on-demand video systems like this. I mean, this kind of reminds me of what the old Motorola digital cable set-top boxes had. This is kind of I'd say this is worse, but it's got a similar aesthetic to it, which maybe dates when this was developed too. But there's some other things on this TV that really struck me as like true shovelware, shovelware features. And one of these is the hotel directory. Like every time I check into a hotel with a hospitality TV system, I like to look at the hotel directory on the TV. Because it used to be, like when I was a kid, that when you checked into a hotel, there was a binder in the hotel room. There was the hotel directory that had info on like nearby restaurants and stuff. And I think making and printing those binders cost money. Guests would walk off with them. So, uh, you know, it, it's like an easy value proposition to tell a hotel, hey, you don't have to distribute a hotel directory anymore because now it's on the TV. So we can go to menu, we go to hotel directory, and let's find out this is, this is uh, the Flamingo. Um, it's, a, it's a casino. So let's find out about playing a greener hand. So there's this like three, barely three sentence message on this TV. D do you think that anyone from like the software engineer who implemented this feature to the probably staff member at this hotel or maybe an integrator they used that typed this in, do you think anyone thought that a hotel guest would ever actually look at this or gain any value from this. This is an utter like box checking feature here. It's, it's totally useless, but from a marketing perspective, they had to say that the hotel had guest directory functionality. Most of this is just some text. Um, there, there's nothing super interesting in here. I was curious about entertainment and attractions. It just, all it really does is it plays like a trailer video for the attraction, no doubt just using the on-demand video functionality in here. But the trailers are like, they're so short, they feel kind of useless. It's sort of awkward. Some of them are, some of them are sincerely maybe only 10 seconds long. My very favorite thing in here though, if you want to see some software like gore, I think it was in Kids and Family. Is this, is this it? No, this is just that same video streaming interface. It's weird. So there's on demand that has like categories under it. But then some of the things on this menu are just categories under it. That includes Kids and Family is just a category in the vertical carousel here. And the adult zone is also just a category in that carousel. But if you want to see that, you're going to have to subscribe to me on a different video streaming website. No, I think it's guest services that I'm thinking of. Yeah, so this is a carousel, a lot like what we saw before. 
but this has an added bonus. Look what happens when I use it. Oh, isn't that great? I remember in like the 2000s, there were a lot of like embedded software packages that were like this, where it like updates the images so slowly that you can watch it go like we're on a 9600 baud terminal or something here. But here we are in 2023 and it's still like this. One final thing I want to point out because this is like once again this feels like a shovelware thing. It's not like that terribly implemented but it's still not really useful enough that I think it's a valuable feature. Notice that press one to connect a different device. There's a phone app. Um, yeah, I'll just say yes. I installed it on my phone and I set it up, but I'm not even going to bother to show it to you because it is not even remotely interesting. Uh, it just, it works exactly how you'd expect, but you can install this phone app. You can put in the six digit number. And now I thought it would make my phone a remote for the TV. It actually doesn't. It's somehow worse than that. All it does is it lists the channels on the TV and you can choose a channel from that list and the TV switches to it. The only features besides selecting channels are turning the volume up and down and turning the TV on and off. The thing is, the latency in the app, at one point I was messing with the volume slider in the app and I turned it up. The volume didn't turn up on the TV. The app showed a loading spinner. It went on forever. I gave up on it and I force quit the app. And then I think over a minute later, the volume on the TV went up without me having touched the remote. So that's how the app experience works. What do you bet there's like uh, an AWS, uh, like uh, SNSQ that that volume up command was stuck in? One more thing, one more thing that's a little bit interesting about this TV. If we go look at the guide, okay, the guide is, it's just as painfully slow and unusable as everything else on this TV. It's got advertising for the, the you know, they used to call this pay-per-view, but I guess it's just like rebranded, right? It's called On Demand now. Um, there's something sort of interesting here, though. If we go up in the channels, um, I don't think there are page buttons on this remote. No, so we just got to do this. Oh, we got to get up to 80-something. I got to I gotta fill the time while we go up, right? So uh, encryption, an interesting thing. I was just reading a brochure on LG's website for this product, which... I should remember it's like pro LG pro vision or something. The, the whole like hospitality product suite from LG is called pro colon and then something. And they really um, played up. I think it's called pro idiom, which it's interesting. It's a DRM scheme. Uh, the LG hospitality TV platform implements encryption from the head end to the TVs. And as I understand it, based on the website, that's to meet a requirement that some of the cable networks have for delivering content to hotels. I think they're, they're worried about people pirating things by checking into hotels and then recording them off of the hotel on-demand system. So uh, Pro Idiom encrypts the video from the head end to the TV in the room. Um, and it was the, the advertising verbiage on that was very much like satisfies requirements from cable companies. So this is like something that's been imposed on hotels from above. Okay, so here's our last thing that's interesting. Up in the 80s, these convention channels are uh, injected internally in the hotel. When I say injected, like in the old days, that would be like an RF modulator that got mixed um, onto the cable system. But I'm quite sure these are IP. Um, they're just IP streams. But I thought it was sort of interesting that the HDMI input on the TV is channel 86. I actually, I don't think I've ever seen an HDTV before assign a channel number to one of the video inputs. It kind of makes sense, especially when you look at the history of TVs and how they used to handle, like, how so many VCRs used to use an RF modulator onto channel 3. But I'd never seen this before. There's no, uh, like, exposed. You know, some hotels have, like, a wall plate that breaks it out, but this one doesn't. So you'd have to, like, really get, I think, elbow deep behind this uh, TV mount to actually use that.
okay, that's it. I think I'm out of interesting things about this TV, and that wasn't, uh, that wasn't all that many interesting things to begin with. Let's go back to the vacuum cleaner. All oh, right, this program guide is completely unusable. Oh, there, oh, no, no, I think it's 20. It's in our, oh, yeah, uh, shop that, shop now, yes. Uh, I think the vacuum cleaner spot is over. <laughs>